What is up, people? Uh, so it's been a while since I've made an update video just about how everything is going out here in the mountain. As you can see, we're in the clouds now. It's quite wild when you're not used to it, right? Uh, and a lot has happened. Namely, very recently, as my family, friends, and supporters know, I was hospitalized. I got something called typhoid, which is really nasty, bad stuff. And so I thought, you know, it's been a while. Let me go ahead and update you just about a variety of things. And I'll try not to stretch it out too long. Um, because that's been obviously very discouraging. But prior to that, I was actually doing very, very well health-wise. So as a lot of you know, I'm very meticulous, assiduous, and uncompromising about my day-to-day -day routine. Like my self-empowering health routine, which is I wake up, I both get my feet on the ground... I do breathing exercises, I do these drainage exercises where you clear your drainage pathways. If you're not familiar, I highly recommend just looking it up. It's definitely worth doing. Um, I, I stretch and um, do my breathing exercises, meditate, and then I take a cold bath afterwards. And it really, it's very beneficial for me. And then, of course, every single day I play with my little boy, right? He's the best thing ever for my health. Like, he's opened up my heart and my mind. And my awareness to a whole entire different dimension of reality that I would have never known. So he's the best thing for my health and I get to play with him every single day. So essentially what I'm saying is every day I've been dedicating at least minimum an hour. That's not including playing with my little boy, but minimum an hour to just doing breathing exercises and getting my feet on the ground and meditating and doing these introductory basics, all of which have measurable benefits, right? Measurable benefits from our limited science. There's many things we cannot measure that have benefits. And, I mean, I was, I was doing very good. Actually, for the first time in several years, since 2019, uh, when I got really, very sick and thought I was going to die, you know, when I lost almost 20 kilograms, around 45 pounds, thought I was going to check out early, um... Since then, I haven't been able to physically push myself, like, training-wise. And um, it's also crazy because I regressed back to my weight when I was 15 years old. And I just could not pick the weight, weight back up. It was such a strange thing. But finally, very recently, in, uh, in the mountain, I started training. Of course, there's no, no weights out here in the mountain. So I just got myself some heavy-ass stones and... Uh, Lifted a bunch of heavy stones, and it was going good. I actually started picking up weights, and I had to get myself some heavier stones, <laughs> which is a good sign because my body adapted quite quickly. And I, I was just doing very good health. I was climbing big ass trees to get myself some nice organic papaya, which is very good for my digestion. And papaya is just it's like a superfood. Period. I. Uh, Going up and down the mountains is not even a thing anymore, or it wasn't prior to getting the typhoid and having to take antibiotics and all that shit. It was one occasion in a, in one particular week where when it rains like really badly, I was showing the mountain, motorcycles can't come up. So cars can't come up, period, but m motorcycles generally can, off-road mo motorcycles. But if it rains very badly, they can't. It's even very, it's extremely difficult actually for people to get up the mountain. So there was one week in particular when I came back from the city, I had a bunch of stuff that I needed to get up to the mountain, including food. And unfortunately, nobody could come up the mountain. So I made the trips and I went on several occasions. And each time, I'm just estimating, I don't know, but probably around 40 kilograms, around 90 pounds that you're taking up. And that's a lot, trust me. That's a lot. When you're hiking up a mountain, um, that's a lot of weight. But it actually got to the point because I was doing a day back to back to back where it's actually relatively easy. So things were going good. Uh, people, actually, a lot of people got sick around. I mean, there's not even a lot of people on this part of the mountain, but I mean other villages and stuff. And they got sick, and I also got sick with them, but I, it, was, it was like Mickey Mouse. So I actually responded better than most of them. So I thought, damn, you know, there's some real progress being major. My health is it's actually doing very well. I'm feeling very optimistic, very energetic, um, and things are, are going good. I also made a dog friend. So the dogs around you, they're like wild dogs. They're kind of like cats. They just run around. Most of them, unfortunately, aren't very friendly. Not to say that they're aggressive, but they're very wary of people because that's kind of how the coach is, yeah? But this one is still young. It's kind of like a puppy. It's a little bit older than a puppy puppy, but it's a small one, and so it's very friendly. And prior to me having to go to the city, 
uh, when I got the typhoid, I wanted to make sure my little boy, he, he has this fruit that he loves. So there, there's a, a shop down, way down at the bottom of the mountain by another village called Buskalan. It's a famous village where they do the like ancient tattoos, the traditional tattoos, they tap the tattoos. So a lot of tourists come here for that. Go there for that, fortunately. <laughs> I'm not, I don't want to live somewhere where it's a touristy place. And um, on that day, Shami wanted to play a lot. And I also know before I go to make like a long trip, we have to play a lot, get, get that in there. And so he didn't want to let me go. And it was getting late. And so I, this little shop down there closes, I think, at five or six. I can't remember. So I ran down the mountain. I'm on the run, yeah? Uh, to get down to the bottom of the mountain before this little shop, the only shop around you, closes to get my boy some fruits. And there's this little puppy that, see that little dude right there? Where is he? And it followed me all the way to the shop. Very, very cute little dog. Um, but anyways, yes, long story short, things were going very well. It's feeling very optimistic, making some progress physically. And then uh, I went to the shitty city <laughs> and I got typhoid, which is this horrible disease, man. It's, it's actually life-threatening. And it, it ended up being life-threatening because I didn't want to go to the doctor. So after, obviously, what happened, I've always been weary of the pharmaceutical industry. I, I know this history very well. So it used to be intuitive, and now, of course, I've researched it very closely. How, for example, the Rockefeller family, you look up the Flexner report as well, it's closely associated with that. How they were the primary force behind eliminating what we call today alternative medicine, which was widely available in the past, and then having a regulatory process that mandates only specific uh, medicine is accepted, right? which is today pharmaceutical, the pharmaceutical system we have, this nightmarish system. And the just very quickly to drop some knowledge, you know, I can't, I can't help myself. The significance of this is when the Flexner Report was compiled, the people behind the movement of monopolizing health, so the Carnegie Corporation, the Rockefeller Foundation, and associated groups, these groups were simultaneously the greatest progenitors and patrons of something called eugenics. Eugenics is about depopulation. And then, just to complement that viewpoint, and you can go look it up. This isn't just me just speaking. If you look it up, they had plans to sterilize over 15 million Americans to begin with. And then if you go look it up as well, the guy that's considered the patriarch of the Rockefeller family, John D. Rockefeller Sr., whilst he was throwing money at monopolizing the healthcare system in favor of what we have today, this pharmaceutical-based system, he himself refused to use that, and he stuck with what we call alternative medicine today. So one plus one plus one equals three, right? So we got people that are funding depopulation movements, sterilizing people they consider to be less than. They are monopolizing the healthcare system in favor of this toxic system we have now, while simultaneously the patriarch of that refuses to use that medicine that he's trying to force on everybody else. Anyways, so I've always, um, in the past, I was intuitively suspicious of taking antibiotics maybe a handful of times in my life. I've always believed in letting your immune system try to ride it out. And so also what happened with my health, because I took Augmentin, I took that antibiotic, and I had a near fatal liver injury. My body, different organs were shutting. I was horrible, man. And I really thought I was going to check out early. So after all of that, obviously, I don't want to go to the hospital <laughs> under any circumstances unless I'm in a position where I might die. And so that was the case. So I had to go there. Uh, my body was rejecting what they were trying to give me at first. They were giving it to me through an IV, the antibiotics, and I started to throw up. And then they, what did they do? Oh, they want to give you some more pills. You know, just feed pills, feed pills. Give you pills now to repress your body's natural response to something it doesn't want inside. And I said, no, look, you got to give me something else. And eventually, fortunately, we found something and um, managed to kick that stuff out of my, my system. Uh, but it's no joke, that typhoid stuff, man. So I went down there to do my visa, basically. I got stuck because there's endless typhoons. It was a super typhoon. And so I got stuck in that particular place. And then um, I ended up getting the typhoid, and I got very, very sick, man. It was wild. So as you can imagine, that's very discouraging, right? I mean, I've been working extremely hard on my health. I don't even know the last time I had a snack. Um, I'm just very assiduous in, in doing the basic introductory and the right things. A lot of people can say, oh, you know, I'm trying so hard. And they know deep down inside they're bullshitting themselves. But it's very challenging when you're genuinely trying very hard and, and things just don't seem to go right. 
However, it was one occasion, and I think this was the first day when I was in the, in the hotel room, and I was burning up, and I was so frustrated and angry, man. And I'm like, God, what, you know, what's the deal, man? And getting very angry and frustrated. And then you can say I'm having a conversation with God or my higher self or just myself, however you want to frame it. And what I got back was, <laughs> you know that before you left, you were feeling a bit sick. You were actually a little bit sick. Your immune system was compromised. You were going to bed. You, your sleeping patterns, you disrupted them because you were working late. And then when you did leave, you maybe had two hours of sleep the night before, pushed yourself all the way to the city, which is about a seven-hour excruciating journey. It's not an easy journey. And then when I got there, um, I went immediately at it to do all the things I need to do. And also the following day, what did I do? I had a big-ass cappuccino and went to work and doing all these things and just pushing yourself, pushing yourself. And the reason why I point this out, guys, is because we can always kind of point the finger and scream at the sky or whatever it is you want to do and feel helpless and as if you have no say whatsoever in the circumstances that are currently your life. But there's no power in that whatsoever. Instead, we always need to look at what can I take ownership of? What choices could I have made better? Now, don't get me wrong, uh, because choice is actually the product of awareness. And awareness is always growing. So as awareness ascends, so can your ability to make better choices, right? And that's endless because enlightenment is a goal that you can aspire to, but it's not something you can necessarily attain. We don't know how much human beings can truly evolve and grow. We don't know our actual potential. We don't. We're still learning about that. And so you can always point the finger at yourself and make the argument that I could have, I made a bad choice. I could have made a better choice and this wouldn't have happened. Um, and it's a difficult process to do, especially if you are quite critical of yourself. You also know this is where the ancient proverb of know thyself is so significant. You need to know yourself because people are different. But like me, I can be very critical of myself. As a result of that, you need to have balance in all of that. So rather than always pointing the finger, you did this wrong, you did that, you need to also be gentle and be like, okay, this dude, Gavin, he's been through quite a bit of shit. I know his story <laughs> since he was a little kid. He's been through a lot of shit. So let me be gentle. But simultaneously, we have to coach ourselves in a way that we are always trying to promote our own personal growth. You have to be your number one advocate. So you got to be gentle, but at the same time, you got to give yourself a bit of a push and you got to try to take ownership of the decisions within your grasp. And um, it's tough because, like I said, it's like an endless loop, endless circle. Your awareness is always growing, so you can always make better choices. And therefore, you're always gonna, you can always make bad choices. You can always uh, blame your choices for your circumstances. Now, more often than not, that is true, though. We... You know, we make choices unconsciously, which is to say you're not doing it mindfully, and then it creates the illusion of chaos. How did this happen? But it's because we were unconsciously making decisions that were not necessarily in our benefit. Now, there are also occasions, don't get me wrong, where bad shit can genuinely happen that is far beyond your control. Right? So a bomb can drop out of nowhere. There can be some kind of a hurricane. Whatever it is, it can come out of nowhere, uh, allegorically or literally speaking. And things go to shit. But when that happens, guys, I know that we have a knee-jerk, impulsive, psychological inclination to go ahead and do something emotional, often irrational, to deal with that pain. The only formidable response is to be grounded in your logic. So don't impulsively and emotionally react and give away your power. Logically and calmly respond what's the best chess move i can make now this is very difficult because we obviously live in a culture we live in a world worldwide um where there's an endless catalog of distractions right if you're feeling the slightest bit of discomfort you can run to the fast food place down the streets you get something it's not even real food but it stimulates you it briefly distracts you from your pain you can endlessly and mindlessly we've all done it including myself scroll on social media because it's kind of like a smoke break for your mind uh, you can go to more extreme lengths and get wasted and use that to pacify yourself, to try to kill and repress your pain. That's a path that I took deeply. And ironically, anybody that's taken that path knows it only gets worse. You can jump from one meaningless relationship to the next to try to distract yourself. You can look at porn on a daily basis to distract yourself. 
you can binge on Netflix to distract yourself. Like there's just an endless catalog of things you can do. But each time we do that, guys, the one big issue is that we are actually training ourselves to deal with hardship in life in a very irrational and disempowering way. So when we do that, there's an expression, when things go bad, don't go with them. So what that means is if something goes bad, don't make a bad choice that's going to make it worse. Because then you take a problem that could be solved in this amount of time and then becomes this amount of time. So each time we make a poor choice, when we in intense discomfort or pain and feeling hardship, we are training ourselves how to deal with it in the future. And therefore, we are making ourselves more incompetent to deal with hardship. The other thing is we also actually robbing ourselves of developing a relationship with ourselves. And this is absolutely imperative. It was Bruce Lee, I think, that said that all knowledge starts with self-knowledge. Everything we experience in this world is being interpreted through the self. You need to know what lens you are perceiving the world through, which is to say yourself. You need to know who you are. And when we are faced with intense hardship and difficulty, there's a lot of autopilot self-talk that goes on. And that will actually help you understand and give you insight about how you were conditioned, how you were raised, the voices that you have come to echo from when you were small, the paternal figures. And these questions have to be dug into. I'm not trying to go too deep, which I tend to do always anyways. But um, my point being, like no matter what happens, no matter how unjust it feels, guys, we have to develop the capability to sit with pain, sit with discomfort, and then rather than giving into it and making an impulsive bad choice, saying, what is the best chess move I can make to deal with this? How can I respond to these circumstances so that in a year's time, it'll actually be self-serving. It'll be constructive rather than destructive, right? Don't make destructive choices with bad circumstances. Make constructive ones so that you can create something because we are, we are created. That's what decision is all about. So yes, what has happened with me recently was very discouraging. And I can complain about it. I mean, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Anybody that's really familiar with my situation. But there's no power there, guys. You have to try to calm yourself, right? You have to learn how to sit with stress, calm yourself, and then respond intelligently. Because anything else is going to just make things more difficult. And therefore, it's irrational. So, and any energy that gets expended on, oh, why this, why that, is a waste of energy. You need to expend your energy on solutions. So I am fortunately now back here in the mountain. Very happy to be back here. I can breathe fresh air. I can get my feet on the ground there and, <coughs> excuse me, get back to the basics. And although I have fallen off the proverbial horse, you guess, what, guess what you do? You just get your ass back up on the proverbial horse because that's how life works. And I assure you, the more proficient you become in dealing with hardship, because hardship is a part of life. I don't give a shit who you are. I don't care where you come from. You are going to deal with hardship. And if you're always taking shortcuts, if you're always trying to distract yourself, if you're always trying to pacify that feeling, all you are doing is you're putting yourself in a position where you are sheltering yourself from how to develop the proverbial muscles and endurance to deal with difficulty in a formidable way. Um, now, that doesn't mean you just sit there and endure the pain. That's another aspect. That's another dimension. That's a whole entire different story. When fortunately, in most of my life, I've sat and just endured pain. No, you need to take action. There has to be some sort of action. Otherwise, you're going to sit there and you're just going to suffer and it can eat at your soul. So you, you want to be decisive, but it is imperative that you learn how to deal with pain. And for those who are saying, well, I don't know how, I, how you're supposed to develop this. First of all, whenever a hardship comes, you deal with it. And, and I'm going to give you a, little, a quick little hack that works. <laughs> At least it worked for me. First of all, physical training. I used to be a huge proponent of this before I got very sick. I mean, I still am. That you physically push yourself. You stress your body and then it stresses your mind and you want to give in and you incrementally do it and you develop your endurance to deal with difficulty, pain and hardship because all hardship is some form of stress. That's what it is. It's stress. So you're learning how to deal with stress, push past the stress. So in that way, you can incrementally do it. And then another way, this may sound funny, but it worked for me, was I began to very mindfully look at the small things that I could work on that I didn't really want to do. So maybe the dishes are lying there. I don't really want to do dishes, 
But because I don't want to do them, I'm going to do them. And I'm going to develop some kind of meditative manner in which I can get through this and it's not going to irritate me. And so each time you do this, guys, you develop the endurance and the capability to get through hardship. So I am back here. I'm very happy. Join us out to 20 minutes. My apologies. But yes, sometimes life can feel very unjust. And uh, whoever's listening to this, whatever you're going through, hang in there. Just take it one day at a time. And um, again, don't give in to the impulsive, emotional, destructive, self-destructive decisions that can just make things worse. Instead, pause, feel the pain, and then ask yourself, what is a self-constructive decision I can make? So that in a year's time, I will have totally changed my circumstances and I'll be proud of myself. Anyways, um, just a big shout out quickly to my, my friends, my family, my supporters during me having this typhoid because trust me, I was also very negative, feeling like shit, just like why me? Um, and just, uh, you have been amazing. I love you. What can I say? Um, yeah, truly amazing. And, I, and I'm very grateful and lucky and special. And I feel like God expresses his or her or its love to us oftentimes through our relationships in this earthly realm. So in that way, I feel very gifted and blessed, and I love you guys. Uh, what comes next? I am still working on that digital school. Please be patient. I, I'm, I've, I know I've been talking about it for a long time, but I am an independent educator, and I'm passionate about educating people, those who are willing. So for those who are willing, uh, it'll be worth it. Anyways, love you guys. Let me get to it.